L39 on the bench today. Um, I'm waiting for a couple of little bits for it, so I've got to get it together, get everything working on it, and then that's ready for its final prime rub down. And then hopefully we'll be starting to look at normal paint for it, or the top coat of paint. Um, so what I'm actually doing today is I'm fiddling around with bits and pieces. So I've got a speed controller that um, I've got hold of, a uh, Yap 100 amp uh, bushless e e ESC. Um, that's for the Thunderbolt that we put the electric motor in a few, few programs ago. Um, so I thought I would get that soldered up because I want to get that going. As, as weather's now starting to break here so it won't be too long until we're actually out on the field and flying. Um, so I want to just get that soldered up. I've just got to put the ends on for the motor. I've got the end on it for the, to go to the battery. And then I can get that fitted. So I thought I'd uh, let you watch this. Um, soldering is not my foyer, but I hopefully get through. Um, I sort of a few people have taught me little bits and pieces, um, and I've watched a little bit of YouTube's. But I've done a lot of soldering over the last sort of five or ten years since I went over to electric models. Um, so I'm starting to get so I can do a reasonably neat job sometimes. Um, so I thought I'd uh, do. You know, I've got to put these ends on now to go onto the motor. Each one of these on there. Um, the motor's obviously in the airplane. I've got a spare one up there. So oh. ah, so yeah, basically these ends need to go onto that cable so she can connect to the mover. Um, I use flux. I've just got ordinary 1.2 millimeter HS10 um, solder. Now I do know that there's a lot of different solders you can get. Uh, living in a small town that I live in that's just what I can find on the shelf generally but I should really Order some better, better quality stuff. I know that you can buy um, solder with a little, with higher degrees of lead, tin, or um, even silver solder. Depending on what you're soldering, really. Um, silver solder is supposed to be a lot higher temperature, but um, then obviously it makes a lot harder joint if you're using silver solder. Haven't never used it myself. Been told as expensive, but been also been told as very, very good. Especially if you're doing sort of, sort of like some leg work on some retracts or something like that, it can be good for that sort of thing more so than an electrical connection. Um, tin solder, I think, is your standard for your electrical connections. Lead solder, I'm not certain on. Like I say, I don't persist to be uh, extremely good with soldering as long as I can just do enough to get by. You know. Um, as of yet, I've never never had a sold, one of my solder joints cause a spark or a fire or anything like that. Obviously, that would be a worry if, when you're doing cable on 100 amp. That's a lot of heat in 100 amp. Um, so, you you know, um, and in a case of not sheathing it properly, it's a case of a crack in the solder can cause arc and, and that can cause heat in a cable. Um, so you don't necessarily have to have two wires touching each other to to cause a fire you know um, that bit i do know from um, my electrician who does my house he's a extremely good electrician and every five years he comes around and takes all my sockets off my wall and he checks all the cables are tight goes in behind the sockets and tightens them all up and although he says it's not law and not a lot of people do it he said that most Fires in a socket will be caused by the wire vibrating with the hertz of electricity causing it to heat up on a bad joint. So if you put that into a block, screw it down and that screw becomes loose after a little while, that's when you can get the heat. And it's the same with soldering. If your solder cracks and that and you actually not got a proper connection, that's when heat can occur. So that's about as much as I know. Um, so I use a gas soldering iron which is knackered now, bless it, that's done some work. So I should get that on and get that heated. 
use high temperature. Yep, that's on, that's warming up. Um, yeah, like I say, um, what I, little bits I do now is this is the bit that obviously is going into onto here. What I will do, so I should just put that in there so it'll accept solder. I won't put it too far in the vise, but just enough and not too tight. Get the cut bit upwards so I can put solder into it. You know, um, what you do get is you can get a transfer of heat, so it's very hard to get the heat to stay into the item you're soldering if it's transferring through into your vice. So I just try and keep it stuck out as far as possible, but they, I mean, some of you might have some good ideas about that. I did in the past when I was doing some serious soldering, actually put two pieces of plywood in the vice either side of this. Um, of what I was soldering at the time and that did stop the heat to participate through the device as quick um, but until it caught fire on the, on the wood so you know there's lots of different ways so basically first thing is to start getting this hot um, contact there we go um, solder flux always use a little bit of flux I have watched a few documentaries about what flux does and how it works that's quite good it actually cleans the metal and it'll also where flux has been solder will run so it makes the flux the solder run into joints and stuff I mean if you're doing pipe soldering and stuff you can't really do a good job without flux so there's a bit of flux gone in there now, I can leave that heating up. So now what I'm after is this to get hot enough that the solder actually melts on the metal. Not actually on the solder and I'm there we go. Just like that. Spread that around. Bring my cable. Dip my cable in. Typical. That is doing a nice job. Let the cable heat through nicely. Just give it a bit of heat from the top on that cable. There we go. Right. First one done. One of the biggest problems with these gas solder lines is there's a vent here. And if you've got your soldering iron on there like I just had then and that vent's pointing towards where you want to come in with your hand, bloody hot, very, very hot. Um, should really just turn it. But well, that'll make any difference. There we go. And there's our first joint. Um, Solder's gone in nicely, it's grabbed the wire nicely, it's mingled in the wire. These were pre-soldered joints by the way, um, so I didn't have to put any solder on the wire. If they hadn't been I would have pre-soldered the wires so that they got soldered and melted into them. Yeah, and that seems very good. There we go, so that's the first one done. Not too bad at all, two more to go. Yeah, like I say, give us some comments, so let us know what you think. Um, like I say, I'm probably doing it wrong. Um, 
probably doing enough to, for me to get past but if any of you got any good ideas I like learning um, bits and pieces I had a um, comment on the last video on my um, uh, hinges a uh, guy said that if uh, I was better with the glue didn't use um, spray um, that I would get a I wouldn't need to put the cocktail sticks through and that the super glue would run in and do the job nicely um, I do agree with him actually because that's how we always used to do it the only reason I do the cocktail sticks is because I used to I do a bit sometimes with a guy who's bills very large airplanes um, and he was actually an examiner um, and he used to go around people's houses who were building large airplanes to make certain that they were built to the correct standard um, for the BMFA I think I'm not 100% certain uh, so you're talking sort of airplanes that are over a certain weight that have to be inspected um, and that was him who told me about doing that um, which I thought was quite a good idea and adopted it like you say it might be overkill for an airplane the size of the airplane that we've just been doing but um, since I adopted it that's uh, I've just carried on using it so, and um, it's served me well I've never had a hinge pull out um, yeah, I've had hinges on foam airplanes that have been just glued in the factory and whatever pull out but I've never had one of my hinges pulled out with a cocktail stick on it anyway so so that's how I do it but um, he was right what he said and that was a good comment um, and I take it under advisement but we all build our own way and that and it's just nice to learn new ways but it doesn't mean that we'll adopt them and sometimes there's more than one way to do something and both ways are plenty good enough so. But this is the only way I know to solder at the moment. So any any other techniques, speed that up or make a better solder joint or anything, please let us know. There we go. Heat, 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 more heat. That's what I was taught. see that as you can see that wire very nicely soldered in there it is not coming out of there no, you have to break the cable before oh, same with that one yeah no, they don't seem like they're going to give us any trouble so uh, just a sheaf snare
there we go, sheaves on. So that is now ready. There. Reasonably good, I hope. But that's it. You, anyone know any better ways? Let me know. Anyone think I'm doing it wrong on my soldering? I do need a new soldering iron. <laughs> yeah, desperately. Let's end on that. It's really had some heat to it now. It's got holes and melted away. So, I'm sure I have to treat myself. But, yeah, uh, they, I'm pr quite pleased. I mean, visually, they look reasonably as good as what you'd get from the factory. Um, this seems strong to me, like I say, I've never had one break yet or pull out since I've been using this method. Um, yeah, it seems fine. Obviously, your problems come with, I always find, when I'm soldering these things. Um, I don't mind soldering these and I don't find them hard to solder. The trouble is, it's my technique of wanting to get the heat on it. Um, it's all very good as long as you don't distort your plug um, and what I find is I always if I'm, whichever side I'm soldering I always put the other side in here so then if I do get a little bit of distortion once you pull it once it's gone cold and cooled down you pull it apart you know it'll pull it apart and push together again if you um, do one of these and you get a little bit of distortion without this other plug on then you sometimes find that you can't plug it back in can't plug it into anything um, but in general they aren't too bad I just find you have to just get the heat just on the edge here and let it go forward and just not too long the minute it'll take the metal and accept the solder go for it um, and get it done before it melts the plastic this plastic is fairly resistant, but it will it will melt. I have had them melt, so yeah, yeah. But like I say, yeah, they're the harder things to um, do. But everything's doable. All right. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I've just like I say, I'm waiting for some parts for the L39. Um, I'm starting to get it together now. It's actually in the other spare bedroom um, upside down on the stand got the wing on I filled me putting the wing on and um, I went to put the retracts down and uh, one went up and two went down and then two went up and one went down um, so what I've had to do is order a servo reverser for that retrack um, and there was something else I can't remember but a little bit of touching up around the wing joint um, so anyway, but as soon as that bit come, I'll, I'll finish that film. Um, and hopefully that will be a film and putting the airplane together, getting the retracts down, putting it on its wheels. Um, all ailerons, flaps, elevators are all connected now. Um, so that will be a, then a full flight test. Um, I'm trying to sort out where all the wiring's going and bits and pieces like that. Uh, tidy it all up and then like I say she should hopefully be ready for its final prime then um, primer and sand and uh, wet and dry and that will be not sand and uh, and then it could be ready for the final coat of paint so it's uh, slowly getting there now um, still a little bit of work on the canopy to go I haven't shown much um, in the canopy work because I'm not a I'm not a great lover of doing canopies. I haven't done a lot of detail inside and up them. Um, I never do unless it's a quite a bigger airplane. Um, but what I might do is might work on canopy detail on the next airplane, the um, ME262. Um, it's a nice canopy on there, and it's a nice. They're quite a nice airplane. How that's set. Also, they won't need no batteries in the way of it. So yeah, we'll have a look at that. All right. Uh, might actually go into doing a lot of um, canopy detail on that one. Okay, right. Um, lovely job. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you like it, hit the subscribe. Um, 
and we'll keep doing different bits and pieces as we go along. Might even eventually, if the weather break, get some flying videos. Alright, thank you very much. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.